Hey guys, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope uh, you're living your best life and you're keeping it, staying safe, man. Stay safe. You know, I want to make this video, man. Um, and I'm going to touch on a, on, a, on a few things here. All right, so the consensus right now is that China has taken over Zambia. Okay? That's the consensus among a lot of people. Every time you oh, that's why the Chinese have taken over Zambia. All right, cool. And then the other thing is that... Uh, <clears throat> There was a video that was circulating some time back where a Chinese dude told um, told uh, a Chinese lady told a, a Zambian customer in a Zambian Chinese shop say oh they're not serving to foreigners and everyone went crazy you know oh, China has taken over Zambia oh oh that's it game over for Zambia <clears throat> Alright, do I agree with all that? Before I answer that, I'm going to just try and break this down for you. So I'm going to go back in time, okay? Zambia became it, uh, got it, it's, uh, it's independent, it's independence from, from Britain in 1964, right? The first president who just died recently at age 97 Long live KK. Kenneth Kaunda was the first president of Zambia. Okay? And the time he became president, Zambia was one of the biggest copper producers. It still is. But at that time, I think it was, the, uh, it was either number one or number two. Biggest copper producer in the world. So copper was on high demand. This is before fiber optics. Copper was on high demand. The value of the kwacha was the same as the value of the US dollar at that time. Okay? The economy was booming. Everything was doing was doing what was going on well in Zambia. You know, Kaunda was known. He was he put his country first. Zambians don't even know this. Kaunda put his country first. Kaunda's probably the best president that country has ever had. You know, he always put his people first. That's why, even after he was um, removed from power, you've never heard of him being corrupt. You've never heard of him siphoning money somewhere else. He's lived pretty much after, he's just lived a normal life. There was no way that, oh, he had investments in offshore banks. He had this, he never did any of that. He stood up for his people. Now, the presidents that we've had after that, they're all corrupt. <laughs> but they tried to make him look like he was a bad president. You know, the truth is in the pudding. You know, this man had made, uh, created the biggest project in the country today. You know, the biggest projects in the country today were done by him. Okay? All the presidents that we have now, they're puppets, the mediocre kind of presidents. No vision, no direction, nothing. Nothing whatsoever. You know, you gotta have um, a high level of cognitive uh, skills for you to develop as a country. And it starts at the top. Most of African presidents don't have that. Don't have it. Okay? So, Kaunda at this time was, was in high demand. You know, he was one of those people, uh, big people in the world at that time because of us, of copper. Him and Mao Zedong, who was the uh, uh, who was the Chinese president at that time, and was who was also the Chinese liberator? Him and Kaunda had something in common; they were like best mates. All right. So in 1976, Zambia just becoming independent because the British were trying to squeeze them. You know, so Kaunda had a, um, um, had an issue with with oil. You know, they couldn't get uh, crude oil. Uh, they couldn't get, uh, you know, to um, for cars and you know all the other thing, all the other stuff that use crude oil, and all the products of of crude oil it became quite hard because England was trying to squeeze them. So what did Kaunda do? Kaunda went and you know uh, talked to his friend Mao Zedong. So he said, okay, 
we can be buying crude oil from the Middle East. You know, if we buy crude oil, uh, we can use Tanzania, because uh, uh, Zambia is a landlocked country. Tanzania uh, um, um, harbor, which is uh, um, uh, Dar es Salaam, um, to transport, you know, if we can get the oil ship docked there, get the oil, and then we have to transport it into Zambia. The only way we can do that is through a pipeline, you know. So we need the pipeline, but also we need the rail line that can connect the two countries for the goods and, and everything, for the copper as well, uh, which is going to the to the harbor. So we can sell this because the British didn't, didn't build that. So Mao Zedong listened and he gave Kaunda the biggest Chinese aid in Africa until the last, until the 2000s. This was in 1976. Half a billion dollars. 1976. He gave Kaunda 500 million dollars investment to build a rail line and a pipeline. And was the Chinese people that went into Zambia to do it and they'll use the local people whenever they can you gotta remember Zambia just became independent in 1964 this is a few years later this is 1976 so if you, if you add this is like 10 years later they still didn't have enough engineers enough this so they needed already made engineers and proven engineers you know unfortunately 50 years later they still don't have proven engineers you know that's on the Zambians not on the Chinese okay so he sent the Chinese, the Chinese engineers to go and build this thing. Even up to today, this thing is still there. It's got, you look it up, Tazara rail line and pipeline. Even up to today, these are the things they use. And then they, they built up a refinery, which is in Indola, which is a, 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 probably the, um, one of the bigger cities in Zambia. It's on the copper belt. So he went all the way to Ndola, Everything going to refine there. They, 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 they buy crude oil and then they refine it themselves. Okay, That was an investment. That was aid, not investment. It was aid. It was given as aid to the Zambian government. From Chinese, from the Chinese government. The People's Republic of China. At that time was Mao Zedong. That's aid. That's Chinese aid. Now, I want you to compare Chinese aid to European aid. Completely different things. You know complete different things European aid they want you they take more than they give the Chinese didn't take anything the Chinese went there built it they left it in the Zambian hands and they left that, that's it they never you never had anything they never said anything it was just until recently that China started getting bigger economically that again um, Xi Jinping remembered Kaunda so you know they never asked for anything in return, they built, they left it to the Zambian people and gone. If that thing is dilapidated, it's on the Zambians. You know, if it's not in, in the shape it should be, it's on the Zambians. Did they look after it? That's on the Zambians. Okay? So, uh, Xi Jinping already knew who Kaunda was. So, Kaunda went to China at the beginning of the early 2000s again to have that relationship. You know, and they said, yeah, we'll come and help out. Who come so Zambia became a high uh, sort of uh, on the Chinese agenda it became like oh we've already got a relationship with Zambia okay now if you are listening to Western countries trying to talk about China this China that because some of you guys you live there and that's what you're thinking about you would rather see German America whatever doing uh, uh, um, giving aid to Africa right but what you are forgetting is that Chinese aid is actually building things, you know, and it's cheap. And also when they give loans, their interest rate are lower than the loans that, um, that they're getting uh, from Europe. Just recently, Zambia's uh, 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 um, debt is about, I think, uh, $15 billion. Now, that is not all the money. China only owes, it's only $3 billion. The other money is from Europe. But guess what? At the beginning of the pandemic, the Chinese gave Zambia six months where Zambia didn't have to pay back the loan. The Europeans didn't. Okay? So, I understand in some instances, the things the Chinese do might be upsetting. 
that's that's expected since two people coming together you know just like if you move from one country to another you're gonna have some in some so there'll be some sort of misunderstanding <clears throat> but the things when you hear about like um uh when um when you see like a chinese guy telling a zambian kid to pull him a zambian man to pull him on a on a on this uh like what, what was it like a trolley or something that zambian man had every right to say no and the chinese man was not gonna force him not to, to do it you know but the zambian man said yes but this is where the problem is the problem is not the chinese the problem is the africans if you're gonna let anyone treat you like that i'll, I'll do it too i'll try you you know I'll, I'll say you know carry me on your shoulder and if you are an idiot you carry me on the shoulder and they do this all the time look at europe uh, what uh, what german did to namibia uh because of what the nazis did there initially they offered them 20 million dollars now if the namibians were idiots right they could have gone hey, 20 million dollars that's a lot of money thank you you know but the namibians said no 20 million dollars is nothing for what happened and then the german came back and said okay 1.3 billion dollars you see everyone tries it's up to you how you carry yourself as a person as an individual as a life up to you everything that's happening all these little things you see it's up to you okay and then the other video that came out where the, the woman said uh, oh we're not selling to um to foreigners come on come on it's it's obvious this woman doesn't even speak english she speaks chinese okay That's just uh, what we call uh, uh, what you can say broken English. What she was trying to say is we are not selling to the local people, but she's from China. She's thinking she's in China, but she's not in China. So all she knows is no foreign, foreign. Don't sell to foreign, you know. But then Africans like that they pounce on it and they go hard on it. Oh, China has taken over Zambia. No, they haven't. When you look at um, uh, Zesco, don't believe all the reports that you hear. Zesco is the electric companies in Zambia. No, what the Chinese did, because they are having power cuts in Zambia because there's high demand. But the Chinese offered to build um, uh, an electric dam. Say, so, you know, we build it and then you can be paying us. You know, but what you have to realize is that electricity in Zambia makes a lot of money. Zambia even exports electricity to, uh, to Congo and other countries. Yeah, so, so Zambia exports a lot of uh, electricity, you know, uh, uh, to Congo. So they've been having issues, you know, and it's profitable for them to export to Congo than even to sell to their own people. So they've been having issues in Zambia with power, power cuts because now there's high demand. As people build homes, uh, the, the middle class is on the rise. Uh, so there's high demand, industries are on the rise. So there's high demand for electricity and it leads to power cuts there's power cuts there's you know for 12 hours without electricity and then you have 12 hours of electricity so it's just it's just bad so what the chinese decided to do was look we can build you you got a problem we can help you fix the problem you know or help you at least minimize the problem because zambia just like most african countries it needs a lot of uh, a lot of electricity you know industries are coming up so the chinese go we're gonna build you a hydro dam you know and a hydroelectric dam and generate maybe a few more gigawatts and you can just pay us and that was the plan now the chinese build you're generating gigawatts if you can't pay them it's on you you know this is what i'm saying we have to stop this mentality of blaming and blaming and blaming you know they build it for you you use it you can pay off uh if you're not paying it off which means you're not you're not you are not uh working as hard or you're not work effectively to make sure that you pay off whatever money you are owing that's not on the chinese it's on you so the idea that the chinese are taking over zambia here is my answer that's not true what the chinese are doing just like everyone else is doing is they, they they've seen opportunities and they're coming to take over those opportunities young chinese people are coming from china into zambia and take advantage of the opportunities that are there now how come the zambian youths want to leave zambia 
you know, that's the question you got to ask yourself. Why are the Chinese youths rushing to come into Africa, whereas the African youths are rushing to get out of Africa? You know, because our mentality, it's the brainwashing, it's our education. You know, the Chinese, they're having an education that says you can dominate the world. We're having an education that says uh, you can be suckers. There's a big difference. You know, they, they, all they do is theory in their, in their education system in Africa. There's no practical. You know, so now a Chinaman comes and says, oh man, geez, this, this wood will cost a lot of money in China. I'm going to take it. You know, what they should have done, the Zambians themselves would have done a lot of research and find out how much their wood are not just copper, it's a lot of things that could, uh, how much those things will be costing in, in other parts of the world. And you know where they can find market. But they don't do that. They got embassies all over the world. But the people at the embassy, they just go to sleep and wake up and then go to sleep again. They're not working towards empowering their own people. They're not doing their homework. And that's where, that's the downfall, just like many African countries. It's not the Chinese. You know, because I'll tell you what, I'll tell you the difference between England and Scotland. England is more developed. Scotland is not. You know, you know why? Because England was colonized by the Romans. Scotland was not. And once the Romans colonized England, they left a chain of information about uh, 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 trade, um, how to get organized, how to logistics of trade and all that. And England built on, built off that. And I'll tell you so many other places that have been colonized, people leave infrastructures, and people build onto that. In Africa, they destroy infrastructures. You know, so it's not the Chinese fault. It's the Africans. Don't try to, don't, let's just not try to make everyone in this world to be like a god, where they come and they try to be fair. The world doesn't work like that. Look at the jungle. Life in the jungle ain't fair. You know, if you ain't a lion, you're going to get attacked. That's just the way it is. So you have to become a lion. It's the same thing in this world. You got to become a lion. Now, all we do as Africans is hope that people, other people that are coming into our countries who try to be nice to us. No, it doesn't work like that. It's about how you approach me. If, if, you, if I'm coming to your country and you're already on your knees, I don't want you to get off your knees. <laughs> I got to take advantage of that. That's just the way the world works. But if you greet me like a man, standing on your feet, then I'm going to treat you like a man. And that's the way things are. The Chinese are everywhere. Like I keep telling people, in Australia, 75% of companies are owned by Asians. Now, these people have a formula. In Africa, we don't. Let's just be real. Business-wise, we don't. We can have businesses of like little, little businesses of just survival. It's more like work. But we can't develop those businesses to become bigger and employ more people. That's why, uh, that's why the only employment that's created in Africa is through the government, not through the people. Because the people only want to do small businesses, like really, really small. You know, kiosks and this. Nah, that's not how you create employment. You know, our friends do it bigger. You know, you got South Africa. There's Indian in South Africa. They have a big population of Indians. But, you know, the father will start with the kiosk. The son will come and turn a kiosk into a grocery. You know, then the, the grandchild will come and add something to that. And they just keep on building on building and building and building on that. That's one thing uh, uh, Uganda did well. Remember, Idi Amin kicked out all the, the Indians? But when the other, uh, when seven came in, he brought them back. Because they knew something about trade. That's what we don't know. Right now, the relationship that Zambia has with China, Zambia has more to benefit from that relationship only if the Zambians are smart. Only if the Zambians have high level of cognitive uh, thinking. Right now, China has given Zambia so many green lights. You know, they want blueberries. Zambia can grow blue blueberries. They want these all sorts of, uh, of farm uh, products that they want. And anyone can farm that. And there's a free market. In China through, the, through the, the, the Chinese embassy so when a Chinaman is in China looks at oh, I want to go to Africa and find out where I can go he goes to an embassy and looks at which country is allowed to bring in this and that and that is he looks at Zambia he goes oh wow I'm going to Zambia because I can grow there and, and grow a dragon fruit 
There's a market in China. I'll bring it. And the people in Zambia already have a relationship with them. You know, anything after that that happens, it's on the Zambians. It's on the And I tell you what, the education we have in Zambia, just like in most African countries, it's the same. It's the education that's making us always be under there. Remember the African proverb, the hand that gives is always above the hand that receives. The education we have does not promote uh, uh, empowerment, does not empower us. If anything, it lowers our standards. That's why we have so much respect for anyone who looks lighter than us. It's the education. Look at what's happening in Rwanda. You can't rip off Rwandese these kids, man. Because their president has taught them, this is your country, this is your stuff. Look after them. And don't let anyone come and tell you otherwise. you got to make money off this because that's where your livelihood is coming from. And things have changed in Rwanda. And things are changing. In Zambia, we're not getting that. In a lot of African countries, we're not getting that. So the problem is not the Chinese. Because let me tell you what, everywhere you're going to go in this world, you're going to find out that the Chinese dominate in the business or the Asians dominate in the business industry. The, the, the Indians, the Chinese, whoever, uh, you know, they dominate in the business industry. If you go to America, the guy who owns the most hotels is an Indian dude. He's not a black American dude. Why is that? We can go on about all these. Some of these people came with nothing to America. They just started from scratch and they started working themselves up. You know, we just don't know. We don't understand this. We don't understand trade. I'm looking at uh, uh, all these uh, um, uh, brokerage companies, Vanguard, Schwab, Fidelity, whatever, all these multinational brokerage companies, uh, international brokerage companies uh, from America. There's uh, uh, emerging markets, like an ETF for emerging markets. If you look at that, the only country that's represented is South Africa, in Africa. Nothing, because there's no companies that are coming out of Africa that are doing it big. Because the Africans are not making these companies. You look at China, China, they have Tencent. They also have Alibaba. You know, 2006 or 2004, if you had put $10,000 in Tencent on the New York Stock Exchange, today you have $7.1 million. That's a Chinese company. Alibaba, you'll be making money. So it's not, but right now there's even something, some uh, information technology sort of company that's coming out of, um, of, uh, of uh, uh, Latin America that's doing well right now. In Africa, there's nothing, nothing. So don't blame the Chinese. Let's blame ourselves. Let's blame ourselves. Because the problem we also with Africans, every time someone points out your flaws, oh my goodness, they will eat you alive. They get so upset. But yet everyone else is coming here to rip you off. You're not getting upset with them. That, that mentality has to come to an end. Okay? So let me just put it this way. Zambia is not under Chinese rule. Zambia has a relationship with China. They've had this relationship from 1970s. You know, Tazara Rail Line was built by the Chinese. The biggest Chinese investment uh, aid actually was given to Zambia by Ma Mao Zedong to our president in Zambia, half a billion dollars in 1976. They've never asked for that money, never. They, they came, they built, and they left. It's only until recently that China, China started uh, uh, getting bigger that they've, they've, you know, we actually invited them to say, you know what, we have a relationship with you already. Let's grow together. But it's on the Zambians. It's on the Zambia to learn something from what the Chinese... If a Chinaman comes in with, uh, 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 with equipment, time for you Zambians to come together and have equipment. So you can start competing because that's going to uh, wake you up. Like we say in Zambia, get jacked up. <laughs> You're going to get clever in this world, man. It's competitive. It's really competitive. You know, if you look on YouTube, you're not going to... Africa. Some African YouTubers are trying to start teaching Africans how to code, how to do this. Stuff that's important. You ain't listening. You're not going to get views. But when you start talking about drama and people dancing, woo, you're going to get million views. And that's the difference. When you start talking about, oh, who said this? This person is richer than that. You know, all this drama kind of, uh, you know, gossip stuff. Then you get the views. When it comes to real shit, no one is watching. No one is listening. So when the Chinese come there and they do better, don't get, all, don't get jealous. 
Because they didn't spend time listening to gossip and dancing. They spent time learning. Studying Africa. Studying business. You know, wake up. Africans, that's what you need to do. Wake up. The onus is on you. The Chinese are not coming there to enslave you. They are coming there to do business. How you receive them is how they're going to treat you. Period. You know, I know right now there's all these uh, 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 scare tactics that the West are trying to use because China is about to dominate the world. And they're scared. They're scared. They're shaking in their boots. So they are using all these tactics about, oh, um, China is coming there to dead trap and dead trap. The dead traps comes from Europe, not from China. Like I told you, $13 billion, only $3 billion of that comes from uh, 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 China. I think $14 billion. Only $3 billion comes from China. Lower interest rate. And they are giving you breaks because of the pandemic. The, the, the Europeans don't want that. The interest rates are high because you are not rated in their uh, whatever they call Moody's or that sort of rating. So the interest rate you are paying at twice as much. The Chinese interest rate, because they don't follow that Moody's and all that crap, is very low. You know, and they are giving you breaks. You know, say, oh, for the next six months, no interest, no interest going to go up. You don't even have to make a payment. The Europeans want the money. So come on, people, wake up, wake up. It's on you, Africans, it's on you. You keep voting for irrelevant people, people with low cognitive uh, 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 um, uh, thinking, processing, networking in, the, in, the, in there, all those presidents you have, it's on you. Because that shows who you are. You need someone with high cognitive skills to develop a nation. You need people with high cognitive skills to develop a nation. If you don't have that, well, that's it. Give the world to people that actually see the good, the beauty, and what are, that, that have a vision. You know, because the reason why there's so much poverty in Africa is because in, in the world, because Africa is not contributing. You know, that's why a lot of the Africans are rushing to go to Europe. Because people should be rushing from other countries to come to Africa. To come and work. Because we've created stuff, but we are not creating anything. Because of the presidents we vote for. You know, because everyone wants to look good in the in the eyes of the French. You know, come on guys. They blame blame ourselves. For majority of the things, it's time we started blaming ourselves. Thank you for watching this video. And please subscribe. Goodbye.